Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We're going to talk to you a little bit about when we were in Isla at Bunahaven. Bunahaven. Yeah. Yep. It was kind of a transitional moment for us, but why don't you lead off? Probably my... Now, granted, we toured six distilleries, I think, while we were there. Three on Isla, three on the mainland. Mm -hmm. um, so... Initially, though, very impressed, very surprised by Bunahaven. Probably my favorite site. Because it's more old and well, rustic? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, the, so the day before we went to Ardbeg. Right. New, shiny. Everything's white. Everything's clean. Everything's polished. Yeah, and they've got new the brand visitor new center. were coming in. Yep. Yeah, new yep. visitor center. Then we go to Bunahaven. Right. And it's set... Just the setting of where it's at on that bay. Yes. Hills yes. sprouting the sound up behind of it. Jura. You know, Roy said that, but on the map it shows the sound of Isla. I know, I saw that. I think that he was too. wrong. Okay. Well, maybe it's maybe like multiple names. It could too. be. Because, yeah, when <laughs> I looked they at called, the map, that's what I they saw called the, the same waterway. thing, the sound of Isla. Yeah. And Actually, it wasn't a bay because I think it goes on by, maybe. I'd have to look at the map again to see, but well, yeah. The definition of what is a sound. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Bunahaven is not <laughs> shiny and new and clean. Right. Its history is preserved there. For a bit. Somewhat. Right. They are... Knocking old buildings down. They had to knock down a couple of the old warehouses. Right. And they're and building, they're building a, new ones. a really big and nice visitor center. Yeah. Hopefully they preserve some of the history that's there. I think they will. I think they plan on it. Yeah. They had those cool it, little, like, work house lodging the old, areas. That the yeah. old, well, and there used to be more where the employees lived. Right. So. Yeah. Boy, they had a couple of the guys that were construction guys living in one of them that they'd fixed up. And boy. They could fix those up nice. I would stay there. It'd be like a bed and breakfast. Oh my god, it would be good. Yeah, it, they were so neat because they're literally what a hundred yards from the water, if that. Maybe yeah, not that. No, probably not even that. Uh. -uh. Yeah, no. and it was so neat near this. Okay. Pause. We all walk off, off the grounds of Bunahaven, around like a path that had been along the shoreline. Well, it's kind of rocky cliff. Even, yeah, that kind of came. Yeah, up I could. I mean, I was thinking if we weren't going to be interviewing Billy soon, I would love to have a pair of hiking boots and go up to the top. And I was just like, man, this is awesome. Mm -hmm. And that was the first kind of it not was, wow moment, but like soothing, calming moment I'd had on Isla. Yes, real moment. I think where it, it hits you. Yeah. How much history is there? How much? Well, it was calm yet kind of rustic or yeah or wild, barren. But you're looking it, over at the distillery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sun was it was partly cloudy that day. A uh, little bit breezy, a little bit windy, a little bit cool, but not bad. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so we started the tour. Colin um, led our our tour. Right. We did the Warehouse 9 tour at Bunahaven, which I would encourage. I know there's several different levels of tours. Uh, the Warehouse 9 tour, you got a tour of the distillery. Then you got to go into warehouse. the Dunnage Warehouse. Yeah. Uh, dirt floors, um, very musty smelling. Uh, I think there was five whiskeys late, or five barrels sitting there that we got to sample. Mm -hmm. One of them is this one right here that I picked up once we were done. Right. The Amontillado cask finish, which is a, I want to say, almost 15-year Bunahaven. You get this nice bag when you purchase a bottle in the distillery, in the visitor center. Um, so this was distilled in 2003, bottled uh, by hand uh -huh. at the distillery, uh, January 28th of 2019. So it could be 16 years, depending on the date it was distilled. It's 57.4%. Bottle 286. And this isn't necessarily a review of this whiskey. This is a, the this is a review of the distillery. We're gonna I'm gonna share. If you want some of this, I'm gonna I'll have some while we're talking. That. We yeah. should have poured this before. Right. Well, you're all right. Um, we're out of sorts a little bit. Yes, because there's this little tiny uh, Moynier PX finish, uh, 200 CL. 
that I have here, but I haven't cracked it yet. It will be cracked. That, that was bottle number five. That was so. This was hand bottled at the distillery as well from that cask. Mm. Uh, this was cask number five that we got to taste during the Warehouse 9 tasting. This was cask four that we got to taste during the tasting. Uh, both myself and Roy, Octave Vitae, picked up this bottle right here after the tasting. Delicious. Now with the Moignier uh, PX, it only comes in, the, this is a 200 milliliter bottle. That's the only way you can get it. So, uh, Colin led us on the tour. What I found awesome I thought we had a Moigny bottle around here from you do. Uh, the phage. From yeah. last year's yes, phage? I know. Should be up there at the top. Eyeballing. Oh, I can see it. Yes. <laughs> uh, anyway, what I loved, they're mash tons. These, they're solid wood, well, not solid wood, made of wood, timbers. Right. Thick. Um, thicker than a two by four. It's basically a big cask that's made with right. these. I want to say they're like 16 foot, 20 Huge. foot long. Uh, yeah, because they were building, they just built what, a new one, or two new ones. What do they call it? Staves, yeah. kind of. But they were expensive ones too. I think they were saying they were like 70,000, yeah. 60, 70,000 pounds a piece. They had three or four, they just got a pounds brand new one. And money. Yeah, yeah. They'd just gotten a new one in, uh, and so they were. Uh, they had water in it, yeah. treating it so the Just wood would seal. Just expand, yeah. But the other, at least the the one or two that they had fermenting, I asked, I said, how long has that thing been used? Oh, about 50 years. Mm -hmm. Solid wood. Yep. It's been wet, had stuff fermenting in it for 50 years. Yep. I was, I was like, wow. I know. That wood can last that long. <laughs> Well, wet, I mean, wood some, aged fermenting. Some wood lasts long. Yeah. What? We're not reviewing the whiskey. I know. You got your nose all stuck up in it. It smells good. <laughs> I was waiting for you to respond to my comment. That was a double entendre. Mmm. Mm. I've got my nose all up in it. I like the nose on mm. it. It's got like a powdered sugar sweetness. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And then a little fruity character all, all together mm. as well. Mmm. I should have bought two of those bottles. <laughs> 130 pounds in the shop. A little pricey, a little expensive, but delicious. One of a kind. <clears throat> it is. Now, see, the nose for me on this one's more impressive than the taste, which is, I didn't buy one. It's very good, but I think it's more your wheelhouse mm -hmm. than mine. Yeah. It's got a Probably. dry finish. Mm. The Montiano. Fruity. Cask. Uh, juicy fruit, citrus at the end. Mm. It's still very, very good. So, after the tour, after the tasting, we go out, Bart's out on the 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 knoll overlooking it. The crack. I'm taking hole. pictures. And, uh, oh, yeah. You got that cool picture of the Boonahaban sign. Mm -hmm. No, you should put a photo of nope. it. Nope. Mm -mm. Why? It's for the book. Ooh, that's right. You were talking about doing the book. Yep. No teasers on okay. that. Okay. All right. Well, that was a good of a teaser. That was a good shot. And it might be right there. I will say it's on your screensaver, which is why <laughs> I was thinking that looks yeah. so good. That'll be in. The, we're talking about doing a book. If I don't do a book, I'll show some of these. Maybe tweet okay. some out or sure. Instagram. Some. That's a lot of extra work, I know, but, but I love it. How many photos well, did you take? A lot. Didn't you say like sixteen hundred? Yeah, or more somewhere right. there. You took a lot, so, a lot of photos, and that's a good one. Some people have seen, you'll know if you ever see this photo, he's laying down. No, we don't want anybody else to copy it. I'm going to have to get the book. Get the book. Yep. Okay. Cheap. No get it. Zip it. it. Zipping okay. it. Shut up, shutting up. Done. <laughs> All right, so then we do the interview. We'll get off that. We do the Yeah, interview. we meet with Billy, The uh, and I'm drawing a blank on its last name. I have to get with Roy. Maybe we'll put it up here. Uh, he sat down with us. He runs the uh, the site, kind of the site yeah, manager, yeah, the, yep. the visitor, visitor center, center manager. Sat down on the dock at Boonhaven. Wind's blowing a little bit. A lot. Bear with us. Yeah. And uh, watch Billy. Boom. I'm Scott, by the way. I know we met earlier. We've met, but, but, yeah. yep. Again, yep. Bart, oh, Billy, wonderful to meet you. We, are, we were just talking about it. The This, I, hope, I think this is going to set expectations. Yeah. for the rest of our Scotland tour. <laughs> right. Really, it is. Uh, the, the, the history that's here, uh, the setting, 
the scenery. It, yeah. This is going to be hard to beat. Well, it's funny. So we wandered over onto the uh, onto the edge over here, and we're just looking out over the scenery. And and Scott literally says, "I don't care if we go anywhere else." <laughs> yeah. Today. Yeah. Well, maybe for lunch. <laughs> well, I suppose from my point of view, part of it is fun of having not like a lot of other distilleries. It's, it's a working distillery. Right. It doesn't look all bells and whistles and shiny and sparkly it's a it's a functional production distillery and we all, we always say to guys that where have you come from and we get new zealand we get canada we get the us and so scotland's not the easiest place to get to and when you get to scotland isla's not the easiest place to get to sure and then when you get to isla we're the hardest place <laughs> to get to so what i like to think of it, it the, the scenery is gorgeous, the location's amazing, yeah. but I like people when they walk out of here to go, you know, it was worth it, that was a fantastic yes. whiskey, and yes. it was a beautiful place to be. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just sprinkled just a little bit, yeah, it, it is, yeah, yeah, the nose, <laughs> the moignet, the taste. So, uh, uh, the warehouse number from, nine, yeah, is, yeah. A, is that's a new kind of tour, or the tasting, the tasting at least, at the end no, of it, no, that's no, getting we, set we, up? We've been doing that for, for three, four years now. Okay. Oh. Um, as the, you, know, the, you know, that was the old floor mall thing. Yes. Um, and it, it lay empty and dormant for many, many years. And we were getting low in space for storing casks. And that's why we started using the first two floors there. So we can roll casks into the bottom. And the first floor, we put them on the arms of the forklift. And we can roll them in the window, but mm -hmm. we can't go any higher. So three and floor are empty. But the first two, we we use that, and we got um, HMRC clearance to do tastings in there, and we've been doing that for three, four years now. Okay. Um, really, really popular. And for me, it's it's fantastic because it lets us showcase some of the more experimental things that we can do with the Bonner Haven spirit and different types and styles of wood to get maturation styles that are a bit unusual. And it, for me, some of them are fantastic drums. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yes. Totally different from what you'd expect mm -hmm. in one of having. Mm -hmm. Right. I think we're, we're two sister distilleries as well at Tobermory and Beanston. Um, they're going through that process now. They, they set up warehouse tastings as well, the beginning of this year. And for them as well, it's, it's a whole new area because you, you can do so many things that are so different from your core range and what people think they know you for. And you can just show how magical a, a process you've got and what you can do with it. Yeah. Now, how long have you been here? Um, two weeks short of two years. Okay. So I started the week after festival last two years ago. Mm. Um, I spent a year at Kalila round the corner, okay. and a year at Lagavulin before that. Beautiful. And before that, I taught genetics at university for twenty uh, years. Really. Uh, Love it. So, <laughs> of course, with our YouTube channel, we're coming up on our six hundredth review. But our very first review was Kalila twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the, the, for me the one is as a as an incomer to the island, I'm not a, I'm not an Elish, I'm a I'm a Glaswegian. Um for me as an incomer, part of the, the joy of all this is that you've got even if you look at the core bottling of every distillery, you've got nine totally different drams. They've all got their own character, mm. their own style, mm -hmm. their own particular yeah. thing that yeah. makes them instantly recognizable from all the others but when you put them together it's that quintessential isla right and that's what people understand and look for and then come and try and play about with. it's beautiful now we're looking is this to the west that's northwest -ish, that northwest way, yeah. that's over to the mall in tobermory okay that's right and the cask here tobermory's yep. pointing that way yep and we get you got a Deanston. separate one over here for deanston that's pointing towards right, it that over way the top of the mountains okay over towards Stirling. Which I hear, uh, they call, is it the Paps? Yep, they call the, it? The Paps of Jura, yeah. They're kind of covered by clouds today, but right. we'd like it's, to see the Paps. Jura's wearing a bra. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, wearing a bra, that's right. <laughs> now, we were even commenting, uh, looks like one of these, or were these worker homes back in the day? Back in the day, yeah. Um, and the old village that used to be behind the distillery as well, but over the, the years they've fallen into a fair state of disrepair. And these, these six cottages here, they used to be rented out as holiday accommodation. Um, so the first two that you get to just behind the cast there, um, they've all been um, done up this year. They've been mm. renovated and, and upgraded a little bit and they're now done up in a, almost like a bunkhouse style format mm. um, because you'll have seen on your way around that we're, we're a bit of a building site at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, we've been taking down some of the older warehouses that were beginning to crumble and fall apart from 1881 
and we're starting a, a sort of almost a regeneration process. We're, we're getting a new visitor centre built down at the bottom of the distillery, and we're getting a big investment in, in upgrading the facility to make it, if not modern 21st century, at least late 20th, early 21st century. So it's just to make it a little bit more efficient, a little bit more effective, a safer place to work for the guys that are here, and, and invest in their future sort of thing. Mm. So these two cottages have been done up as bunkhouse accommodation um, for the guys that are doing the build and the new visitor centre. Hmm. And then moving forward, all six will be re redone up again and used to, to as holiday lets and rental accommodation. Beautiful. Yeah. It's, it's not a bad place to spend a, a couple oh. of days just chilling. Oh, it's so. wonderful. I mean, the yeah. idea of coming out and you're here, and especially when your visitor center is there and open, because yeah. I know you're going to have some food accommodations and yep, everything. We'll but then the idea of even coming out and having a little whiskey and then maybe even hiking and then having a little more whiskey. You've got to be careful with the whiskey and the hiking thing because it tends to fall off quite quickly. I almost, I, I don't, yeah. yeah. I can't confirm nor deny that something almost may have happened over yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, he, he, he had a misstep at After one our point. tasting. I saved it. <laughs> what happens off site stays off site. There you go. That's perfect. No, but it's, what, it's a beautiful place to be in. It is. For me at the moment, it's perfect because there's very little telephone signal. There's very little Wi-Fi signal. Mm. And you, you leave the modern world behind and you yeah. come back to an artisanal distillery that's still keep steeped in tradition in the past and, and the history of who we are and just sit and relax and, and enjoy being here. Yeah, yeah. Part of absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Take it in. 100%. Yeah. Breathe. Yeah, it just allows Breathe. you to even, it feels like yeah. you're... You're able to relax down just a little bit more. It's, you, it, there's so many pressures on people today, in the world today, in life and, and work and everything else that goes with it. Sometimes you, you've just got to take that step back and just enjoy life. And people say to me all the time, oh, you only get one life. and uh, No, you only die once. Mm. You live your life, enjoy every mm -hmm. day of it. And sometimes you've got to be selfish and say, this, this hour is about me. Right. Me and my mates, we're just going to sit, we're going to chill, we're going to have a couple of drams, and we'll, we'll just sit and chat. 100%. And yep. for me, that's what whiskey's about. It's about drinking and enjoying the family and friends and making new friends. 100%. Right in the moment. Be in yeah. the moment with the whiskey. Totally. And with your friends and family. Perfect. Yeah. 100%. Um, so, give us some insight real quick before we go. What what lies ahead for Bunov in the yeah. next five years? Yeah, good question. Uh, <laughs> if I could answer that accurately, I'd buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us as far as you can see. What are your thoughts? I think that for the past, whiskey always goes in cycles. You get mm -hmm. booms and busts and everything like this. And, and it's been very good for the last few years in the whiskey world. And I think partly for us, what we're looking to do is to stabilize where we are give ourselves a really good footing in terms of the new visitor centre, the food provision, the, the different type of, of visitor experience, but still maintain very close links to, to who we are traditionally. Um, yeah, we'll move forward with the times we'll get, we'll get broadband put in so folk can Instagram and Snapchat to their heart's content and all this sort of stuff. Sure. But in reality, it's about building our fan base, the people who know and understand Bonahab and maintaining those guys because they're our, our bread and butter and also get out and introduce ourselves into to new areas and doing different things. And I think as, as far as being here goes, we'll have a, a, a better accommodation for visitors. We'll, we'll be able to welcome you into a setting that benefits the fact that you've traveled for two and a half days to get here. Yeah. See, I don't, I don't think you should. I don't think anybody <laughs> should come here. He's this traditional. He I wants, think you don't want to come here. He secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just want this to stay as yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 And, and part of that is the balance tonight between yeah. maintaining who we are and where we are with, with the fans that we have. But mm -hmm. also make, making sure that we have that influx of new new fans and supporters to keep us moving forward. Sure. Um, you know yourself, if, you, if you're a dinosaur in business, you stand still, you die. Yep. You have to yep. keep innovating, you have yep. to keep doing new things. And that's why we are continually trying to provide new ideas for different kinds of tastings, different types of experience to do. So that if you've been here two or three times before, you like it, you love it, but there's always something fresh that you haven't tried before, that you haven't done before, right. that thinks, yeah, it's, it's getting better, it's even better than it was last time because we did this. Yeah. And that, that for me is the big push moving forward in terms of how we do that in a modern 21st century setting, but keeping it as real as we, we can to, to the true what Bonahaven's all about. Yeah. And we're, we're very different from both our sister distilleries because of our location 
Um, and in terms of the, the, the style of visitor we get here, Islet is, is like Pete Mecca for, mm -hmm. for, for the whiskey heads. Mm -hmm. um, and we stand right out from that because 80% of what we do is unpeated. That is right. But we are still a traditional pedigree Isla distillery. We right. can hold our own against any of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's, for me, the standard that we have to keep maintaining moving forward is be who we are, be part of the big Isla picture because that's also who we are, but still be unique individuals. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And make sure guys like you are happy when you come back. 100%. Oh. Because that's yeah. the hardest job. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're great. Anything else you want to throw in we didn't ask or think about? It? Did you enjoy yourself? Oh, God. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, that, it's, that, uh, it's that ensconced enjoyment. You know, where, like he said, we'd add some ideas, and he, was, he pulls me aside and says, I don't care if we stay here a whole lot longer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't get me wrong, in, in a miserable day, it's a very different animal being here, mm -hmm. uh, especially for getting big westerlies coming in and those pebbles in the beach become bullets firing across the, <laughs> the front of the distillery. But with that, I, I would argue with anyone, I think we've got one of the best locations I of, agree. of a distillery yep. in Scotland. Right. Um, yep. Well, no, Billy, thank you for joining yeah, us. You. I know we took some time yeah. out of your day. All right, great interview. By the way, I had to grab the bottle we have open. Yep, and I'm going to finish before. off my Amontillado. Look how much darker. Uh, yeah, I don't have very much is. left, but this yeah. is just a golden honey color. Yeah, and that is, is rich, rich sherry influence. Rich. Mm. Look at that. Mm. That was Bunahaven really floored me, I, I, I would say. And like you said, we had planned when when we went and Roy was setting stuff up. We said, "Look, we only want to do one, maybe two distilleries a day. We didn't want to be rushed. Mm -hmm. We didn't want to have to hurry one distillery to get right. to another." Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Yeah. So, and we had plans uh, later that day to possibly go to. Well, first we were going to go to the new distillery, Ard Ardenaho, mm -hmm. but it was ended up being closed. Actually, we were just going to go there and eat lunch. And they had the cafe closed, getting ready for the phage. The phage. And so... The island festival. We had talked about going to Kilhoman because it was on the way to Machir Bay, right. where we were going to go dip Love our go toes in the water. We did dip. And I did. Once we were at Bunahaven, and I was enjoying the distillery itself and just the setting, mm -hmm. um, just the history, the smell of the ocean, uh, the black mold on the buildings... I, I, I was like, I don't want to go anywhere else. Right. Let's just spend the rest of the day here. Just relax. Uh, listen to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Listen to the wind blowing. And you can hear it as we're on the dock sitting there talking to Billy. Yeah, you can see his hair moving. Yeah. You see our pants even moving a little bit. We're out on the, uh, we're out on their pier. And uh, so. But a little bit of insight from Billy on the next five years. Uh, you know, he talked a little bit about the cottages and stuff, right. how they're fixed up, the workers like are living in them right now. That, yeah, they're doing some new buildings, some of it's safety related, some of it's just they need room. And the idea that although they want to keep that old feel, they have to make sure they're moving forward as well. Mm -hmm. They don't want to just stand still. Yeah. And it, having a place to eat there, we found out mm -hmm. is huge. Um, I mean... Um, I mean, that was a lot of our talk was, well, where are we going to go for lunch? Where are we going to eat dinner? And having another place, it's a good place to stop. You're enjoying that? Mmm. Bunahaven is becoming, I've been enjoying their whiskeys before we went. Mm -hmm. After the tour and seeing the site, uh, and the Amontillado cask, the, the Moignier PX, this Moignier Oloroso. Right. I mean, it, it, Bunahaven is. Well, they're almost up in, like they're made list. for you. Yeah, I could see that. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you love those 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 wine finishes. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, that's right in the, the complexity there. I would pick this to be the, your your kind of island. Now, granted, so we saw Ardbeg, we saw Bunahaven, and. Log we of, went to Lagavulin. Right. We didn't necessarily do a tour. We did a warehouse tasting yes. there with Ian MacArthur. Yep, we were with Ian. To me, though, and we haven't seen all the distilleries on Isla, Bunahaven is a must visit. Hmm. I would say that from our mm -hmm. trip. Yeah, I mean, it's it was, a must. You, uh, you, and I don't think you can even rightfully describe it or let somebody know how it feels or what you feel when you're there unless you're there. Hmm. Sounds good to me. You can't <laughs> describe it. 
<laughs> it was nice. I mean, we, mm -hmm. we keep belaboring it, but mm -hmm. those six little cottages, if uh, they got those finished out and we could stay there, I would love to stay there. Man, that is good. Those are both good. Now, this was the phage bottling. We need to get more of that one. Yeah, that's good. From from uh, 2018. Yes. Uh, Scotch God shout out. Old Martin Scaris. Scottus. He's got a little... I think I know this one. Something above the A. There was another. Reference. Old Martin Scaris, I'll, I will say. Good old American pronunciation, just like some distilleries. I was a brandy man for many years, and the only whiskey I had was Jameson, as my father only enjoyed it. This is the one I saw. Other people in my life enjoyed wet campfire, bonfire, briny whiskey, and that did not appeal to me at all, mm -hmm. and still don't. To my point, it is you, the Whiskey Tribe, and Whiskey.com that has actually shown me the way to try in many whiskeys and some bourbons, and I've bought now 20 whiskeys the yes. last year, and I regret none of it. Boom. Thank you for showing me the world of whiskey is a friendly place where there are no mistakes, and it is there to be shared. You are wonderful people. Thank Love you. It. Yep. Good company. And Thank you, Martin. I, yeah, thank you, because I read that, and I thought, Scott's going to use that one. Thank you, Old Martin. Old Martin. Old Martin. Yeah, I knew you were going to use that because that, <laughs> that was kind of what I was referencing in a different video that, mm -hmm. that I don't know when it will be out. This idea that there's all these experiences and it's a journey and you move through them and to try different things and don't be just a Jameson man or whatever. I mean, there's so many things out there. Mm -hmm. So, yep. you know, and uh, that's it. It's awesome. Uh, let's do a couple of Patreon shout-outs. We're still getting caught up. These are from the early part of May. We got behind with our trip to Ireland and Scotland. Pat Kane, Pat Kane came in at a $3 supporter, Ooh. so we got to shout his name. Pat Kane! Kane. Way to go. Thank, Thank you, you, Pat. Wow. Now, Pat, you get a double because send us a picture yes. if you like to. Yeah, if you, you don't have to, you got to be fully clothed. Yep. Well, partially. Just got to cover yeah, the pickle. Yeah. Got to have pickle and, coverage. Uh, send us a picture. We'll put it in a later show. Uh, right. Giving you credit. If you want. Get with us. If you send want it to, to us. Uh, you can do spot, Bart at ScotchTestDummies.com or ScotchTestDummies.com. And Emil Ooh. Oliver came in at a $1 support. Hey, Emil. Thank you, Emil. Thank you. Thank yep. you. Jason Michaels or Mitchells. M-I-C-H-E-L-S. Hmm. Yeah, that is weird. Cause $2 yeah, supporter. Yeah. Mitchells. Jason Mitchells. Ooh. Jason Mitchells. Ooh. Thank you, Jason. Hopefully, Raster's covering his ears. Raster, oh, I don't think Raster I'm ever going to go. I'm never going to go look at that little he, thing. Yeah. Just saying. I know. It was. I mean, it's not going to happen, Raster. <laughs> he was happy with as many shout-outs as he'd gotten, which well, was the plan. We said we the, shout -outs. Yeah, we'll we just keep about talking enough. about it and Raster and how there's a thing that's cool. No, I'm not going to look at. Yeah. Uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters, not only the ones that we shouted out, but all of you. Uh, you made the trip to Scotland possible. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And I, I send out while while supplies last. You still get a Christmas card. I still got plenty. Hopefully, we'll use all them up as the year goes by. And I've got to still uh, ask a couple of you uh, who've hit certain levels for a uh, a shirt size. Oh, I've got yeah. to get the shirt size from them. Yeah. Uh, one gentleman, when we were over there, actually said, hey, I know I hit the point. So uh, uh, at one point, you get a, it's not this coin, but you get a special Patreon coin. Another one, you get a mm. special shirt. So if you've ever wanted to back, boom. By the way, 12 Hours of Boom is coming up. Do you want to say anything or just the date? Or uh, Well, if you're watching this before July 6th of 2019, that is when the tw third annual 12 Hours of Boom will be. Mm -hmm. 12 mm -hmm. individual shows. Yep. 10 of them with guests. Yep. First one is just us. The last one is us and Cousin Shane, Shakes Pennington. I don't know if Whiskey Scout's going to be here this year. On, on the very first one, didn't we have a guest on the very first? Nope. It was no. just us. It was just us. Okay. Yep. I always forget that. Yep. Okay. And we've kind of just talked about the year before and kind of enjoyed some whiskey and, and led into the yeah. next 11 hours. And we sip slightly. Yep. Keeps us good. So, go cool. scotch it, boonahobbin it, you scotch gods. Slancha, dummies. dummies.